How did that whole relationship with Jim Cameron start? When you were at Fox or? Um... Yeah, my relationship with Jim started when I was at Fox and um, Jim was doing True Lies yeah. at the time. And at, at first it was gonna be a very hands-off uh, production, the way uh, Jim and Ray Sankini, who was running his company at the time, had, had set up the production. Yeah. And through a series of circumstances, of uh, Fox decided to get more involved and uh, you know, Peter Chernin said to Jim, you know, hey, we're going to put somebody on it from the studio. We're going to put John, John Landau on it. And <laughs> I think, you know, Jim was a little skeptical. And, uh, you know, it was more sort of like, so I understand we're going to get to be pretty good friends or maybe not. You know, <laughs> and I looked at this. I said, hopefully pretty good friends. Yeah. And we worked, you know, on, three, on, on True Lies together and on the opposite sides of the fence, you know, if you, if, if you would. When I then made the decision to leave the studio, um, you know, Jim came to me and asked me to read a project called Planet Ice. Mm -hmm. And I, I read the script and uh, I had a couple different people who knew I was leaving and had scripts that I could have done. And I fell in love with Planet Ice. And Planet Ice was the code name for Titanic. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, we, we wow. said, you know, let, let, let's do this. And we did that, you know, sort of as a one-off. Yeah. And uh, that worked and the relationship worked. And, and I think we, we built it up and then joined Lightstorm as a partner. And, when that, when that was done, and you know, it, when I look back, and uh, Jim and I were doing a little interview the other day, and Jim goes, "Look, this is a 30-year marriage now, and, that, and that's really what it's been like. You know, it's been 30 years that we've been working together, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited that I had the opportunity, and uh, nothing, nothing I would change." So cool. You saved my life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Buddy, I have no idea what you just said. They hurt you, didn't they? Welcome to Behind the Lens. Today, uh, okay, I think he's produced three of the top four movies of all time at this moment. It could be the top three, you know? This is like an ever-changing thing. Avatar, Avatar The Way of Water, Titanic, uh, so much more. John Landau, welcome to Behind the Lens. <laughs> Pete, it's great to be here. Thank you. It's good to see you as always. And when I say that statistic, it, it is ever changing because as we speak here, uh, Titanic is opening again uh, in theaters, uh, 4K, 3D, all kinds of uh, new toys with it. Um, and that will continue to climb up the charts too. It's really amazing. You know, it, it it, it's amazing, and it's a pinch me moment every time I hear that. I think you're talking about someone else. <laughs> I don't feel like you're talking about me. But you know, then, then when you think about it, the idea that a movie that we made 25 years ago is still something people are interested in seeing. Yeah. We make movies for audiences, right. and there is nothing you know more rewarding uh, than people coming up and saying, you know, I saw the movie, I want to see Titanic again, and and I think hopefully over time people will want to look back and see the Avatar films again as well. Oh, I think so. Uh, there's no question about that. I, in fact, I just uh, was telling you before, I just saw Avatar The Way of Water for the second time. Well, thank it's you. a big investment in time, you yes, know, it, yes. uh, but it's worth, and it doesn't feel like three hours uh, at plus at all. You, you know, do when you know why, though? It. Because it's only two hours and 74 minutes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so much better that it, way. <laughs> I'm sure the exhibitors love that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I saw it the second time was with an audience, you think everybody's seen this by now. It's over $2 billion and everything. But no, and it was like packed on a Sunday afternoon there at my local uh, theater. Well, I think it just shows you what the potential is. I think that people yeah. have been cooped up uh, in their homes too much, and, and they want to get out. I think, you know, we as uh, producers, uh, studios, as distributors, we have a responsibility to give the exhibition community product throughout the year. 
yeah. that garners people saying, I want to go to the movies because it is a different experience. Yeah, it completely. And it's so important now. And when we're seeing uh, congratulations on your third Best Picture uh, Academy Award nomination. Of course, you, you won for Titanic, were nominated for Avatar in 2009, and now again this year in the Best Picture race, which is important to see movies like this, like Ty um, Top Gun Maverick, Absolutely. like Elvis, that are box office hits, that often get kind of pushed aside by the Academy for smaller good movies and things. But why not um, recognize when you've got something that's as critically acclaimed here as well, put them in the Academy Awards for God's sake. Look, I, 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 I think that you know we as an industry have to celebrate uh, you know movies that are made for the the big screen, everything, right. everywhere, all at once, made yeah, for the big screen. One. That's recognized, and it, it's not the norm. It's not it does not Top Gun. It's not Avatar, mm -hmm. but it's certainly deserving of all the praise and the accolades it gets. Mm -hmm. I think we have a responsibility as as voting members in all of the different guilds to recognize films that are made for the theater. Yeah, I'm not taking anything away for some great content. Yeah. Uh, that, that is out there and, and celebrated, but great content has existed for years. I remember as a young kid watching Roots. Roots was incredible yeah. television, yeah. but it was television. Right. It, it didn't take the place of, you know, Apocalypse Now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting you say Roots because that was very innovative by ABC, the way they rolled that out and distributed it Absolutely. every night for eight nights. That had never been done before in that way. And that's the kind of thinking I think the theatrical business is looking at too, what you're looking at in, with the Avatar series right. uh, of, of this planned series of movies that are gonna go, which is a big investment of time, obviously, but important. Well, you know, we think it's important. Why? Because we think there are that many stories to tell. <laughs> you know, we're not making these movies because we want to make a sequel to something. Right. We want to make a standalone movie that works. And I think one of the things that I'm very proud of, I think, of Way of Water is whether you've seen the first movie or not, Way of Water stands on its, right. its own as a film. Um, and each of the movies we want to come to their own uh, story conclusion mm -hmm. and their own emotional resolution. Yeah, uh, completely. And I've talked to uh, members of uh, your, your team over there uh, in different capacities, uh, many of whom, I, I did a panel with the actors uh, right. when the movie came out, which was great at El Capitan, and that was a lot of fun uh, to do. And I've talked to others. They seem to have read the scripts. They have. Uh, yeah, they've all read the scripts, and they all, to a person, say, two is better than one, three is better than two, four is better than three, five is better than four. Uh, you know, they are so excited about the trajectory of where this is going. Well, it was really important for us, for them to know the trajectory of their characters. Right. <laughs> because the choices they would make in two could affect what they would do in five. Oh, that's really interesting. And, and being able to share with them, and that's one of the things that took us the time. People go, what took you the time? Yeah. Well, we had to get to four scripts that Jim felt comfortable saying, I'm going to commit my time to, right. and these are movies I want to make. Yeah. And then we shared them with the cast. And for you know, Sigourney to know where Carrie ends up, oh, nice. for Zoe to know where <laughs> Neytiri ends up, yeah. it changes how they might think about something in, in movie two or, or in, mo in movie three. And you know, to me, I look at Sigourney and what we were able to do with performance capture right. on this film is enable an actor to play a character they could not otherwise play. Right. There's no way that Sigourney could play this character of Kiri. Yeah. And we were able to allow 14 her to, years old. 14 years old, <laughs> yeah. and not at the same height, and all, all these right. different things. You, you just can't do that any other way. So th this is an empowering the actor you know, to do that. And um, one of my big thrills um, related to After a Way of Water was in the first week of December, I went to New York from New Zealand, yeah. and I screened the movie for Sam, Zoe, Sigourney and Stephen Lang, yeah. just in a screening room. It was the first time they'd ever seen the cut. And while they were watching the screen, I was watching them. And their reaction afterwards, mm -hmm. um, the emotion that they had for the film they had seen, but for the accolades they had for each other yeah. and the performances. And to see that camaraderie that they had was, was, was great. You know, it's amazing. I've talked to you over the years about performance capture and everything. And I've talked to each of these actors you just mentioned um, about it as well. And I still think it's completely misunderstood by other actors who haven't done it. 
and to get the emotional levels that you have in this current film, A Way of the Water, and, and it's really about emotion, it's about family and everything, that's like any other movie. They shouldn't be scared of it, and I don't know why they are. And I talked to Stephen Lang, and he's frustrated because the you know Actors Award, SAG, and others don't nominate them as an ensemble. And I said, that's because they still don't get it. They, they, they don't. Too many people say, oh, I, you know, we saw she did a voice part. No, she doesn't do the voice part. <laughs> I know, right? They do all of it. Yeah. I, I really think that people have to think of um, performance capture as the 21st century version of prosthetics. Yeah. <laughs> no longer does an actor need to sit in a makeup chair for three hours. Right. And when we go through our process, mm -hmm. everything you see, every nuance, every blink, every twitch in the mouth, those are choices right. that the actors made. And it's the commitment we made. And I, and I go back to the first Avatar, um, where it was much more of an unknown. Mm -hmm. And we made a commitment to our cast that they would see themselves up on the screen. And I was in a screening room yeah. with Sam Worthington, just yeah. he and I, showing him the first scene of Jake waking up. Right. And we're watching it, and he laughed. <laughs> and I get nervous. Wow. And then he laughed again. And I look over, and he senses that I looked over, and he turns to me and he goes, I'm laughing because that's me up there on the screen, mate. Oh, that's funny. And that was like, that's the commitment we made. And, yeah. you know, when, when you see Zoe and, or Neytiri and, and she's weeping over her child, that is Zoe giving that performance. When you hear Z Neytiri singing at the beginning and the end, that is Zoe singing, not in a sound stage where she's recording in a, in a, in a booth. Right. She sang that live in front of a crew around her and gave this heart-rendering performance. And what you see in the character is her. That's exactly it, you know. And, and so, you know, and you're moving a, ahead with it too. And that was an interesting thing to say they've all read the scripts because that's important from an actor's point of view. If they understand other directors, maybe, you know, some directors will only give you pages of a script. They want to keep it so secret for actors. Hey, actors out there, you ought to listen to this. Uh, this is, you're really being actors, um, uh, directors and producers here. In, Absolutely. In that and look, we also look at performance capture as, as the most actor director centric process there can be. <laughs> because in that moment yeah. of the creation of the scene, the director is not worrying about lighting. Right. The director is not worrying about a crane or a dolly or any of these other things. They're just worrying about the performance. Yeah. So in that moment, it is a director working with their actors and to create the best possible performances. And later we pick what were the best performances and then we go back and create our shots after that. Yeah. So it's really like black box theater yeah. for these people working. It's amazing. Have you, um, I, I, Jim Cameron said, I think he's already shot three, right? It's, it's in the can as it were. What we did, um, because it made the most sense from a logistic reasons, and yeah. we'll get to that, is we shot uh, the performance capture and the live action for movies two, three, and the first act of part four. Oh, wow. And the first act of part four, because we have a time cut mm -hmm. where everybody gets older at that point, so we had all these kids. We needed to shoot all of their stuff <laughs> at this age yeah. to play it concurrent with these stories. Oh, wow. You know, I know Cameron was saying before the movie opened, uh, well, you know, we'll see about getting them all made because this has to make this has to be basically one of the top four movies of all time. Uh, I, think, I think it was overstating things a little bit, but yeah, okay. <laughs> but it now is. Right. So th this is a commitment that you guys can make, really. Uh, Disney's obviously all in on this. Look, I, I feel it's a commitment we already always had yeah. from both us and from the studio when we went into these. We always saw it as four movies, mm -hmm. um, that we went in with a green light package across all four movies. And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, we... We, we knew in life there's always needs to be what I call an off-ramp, um, but uh, that hasn't presented <laughs> itself. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's going to Disneyland. You know, you hear those commercials. What are you going to do? I'm going to Disneyland. Well, Avatar is going to Disneyland. Well, we've been at Disney World. I know and, you have. And yeah. that, um, you know, to, to be there, um, and I was very much a part of that. I would fly down almost on a weekly basis while they were building that. Mm -hmm. And to have this world that, we, that doesn't exist for us. We're not even on the set of Pandora where we can see the floating mountains. We're, we're doing it on the virtual set. But, and to be there to walk under floating mountains, to go on a ride, uh, you know, a, a flight of passage. Uh, Zoe and Sigourney came off of that attraction right. in tears. Really? In tears. Wow. And... Um, 
it's, it's an emotional experience where, you know, Pandora really exists yeah. <laughs> and you get to experience it. Joe Rohde, who was the Imagineer who led the whole design process there, he and I were uh, standing outside um, during what I, I would call a cold opening. It was, they were just bringing people in to see how the pulsing, and a woman recognizes us. Mm -hmm. And she comes up to us, and it's, it's one of the really touching things that, that out of this whole experience. She's in tears, and we go, are, are you okay? <laughs> she goes, I want to thank you both. She says, I am fighting cancer, wow. and that attraction has given me a new vigor to oh, continue so fighting cool. it. Yeah. And she walked away, and. I looked at Joe, I said, we're done. We don't need to do anything else. We, we, we've done more than we could ever have hoped. Yeah, the power of entertainment, the power of movies, I've hey. got to tell you, is very strong. And, and what I think about Avatar, it's gotten so much more timely. When you look at this story about a place, Pandora, being invaded, the people that live there peacefully being forced out, what does that sound like? Uh, well, I'm And a, Earth being worried about climate change and, you know, I'll, having to find I want to go to climate. your first point uh, <laughs> initially, which is I received uh, an email from the sub-distributor in Ukraine <laughs> saying that Avatar, Way of Water, is going to become the highest grossing film ever in Ukraine. Oh, wow. And that the people there, in between the air raid sirens, the loss of power, mm -hmm. they go out to see this movie that is about what you just talked about. It's about imperial forces coming in and invading an indigenous population yeah. and the underdog fighting back and surviving. Right. And it's also then about family. Mm -hmm. And these things are to the Ukraine people in this time, that's what they need yeah. to, to n give them that, that hope and that strength that there is that future for them. Which is amazing. And then there is the whole environmental aspect of it too because in Avatar Way of the Water, they're, they're talking about Earth is fucked up Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and we have to find an alternative. We have to find an alternative. And we try to do it in a way that is entertaining first and then provocative. Right. Because <laughs> if we preach, we're only reaching those who are already converted. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at both Avatar films, they end with Jake opening his eyes. Mm -hmm. And I look at both films as challenging, challenges to people to open their eyes, right. to understand that one's actions have an impact on both the world around them and people around them. Yeah. And to gain a consciousness of what their actions actually mean. Yeah, I have to say too, I've seen it twice, both times in 3D. I wasn't a huge fan of 3D because I always had problems with the glasses and things, but I had no problem this time. Uh, it's either gotten better or something. I even forgot I was watching it with glasses on. You know, I think we've gotten better at learning how to use the tools of 3D. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and theater exhibition community has gotten better at brighter light levels. Right. Um, you know, all of these things, you know, con contribute to it. You know, we, we really have studied, you know, how hum we see 3D in our lives and it doesn't bother us. Mm -hmm. um, and to me... Our 3D, we want to be a window into a world, not a world coming out of a window. And any time you jump <laughs> out of that window, you've interrupted that suspension of disbelief right. that you've just tried to earn from the audience. Yeah. And our eyes, I'll get a little technical here, is our eyes have to do two things congruently, right. which is converge. If I'm looking at my finger, my eyes are converging and focus. Mm -hmm. We can't separate those two things. Yeah. So we try to, as filmmakers, always converge the cameras on the subject of focus. Where is the audience going to be looking? And nobody knows better than Jim yeah. as to where an audience is going to look when you have all this up on the screen. So we try to create the easiest 3D viewing experience for audiences. I know what's next because we've got all the avatars, but do you have time to develop other things you want to do outside of... Uh yeah, I, I think now that we're done with, with Avatar Way of Water, th there are definitely a couple of other projects you know, we want to do. We, we'd love to return to, to visit the world of Alita Battle Angel, sure. yeah. um, you know, w which was great. But there are others original ideas that, that Jim has. You know, th think of it as the uh, Cameronverse. You know? <laughs> and uh, that, that you know, we think we you know, now have an opportunity to really go explore and, and go dive into. Um, yeah. you know, and, and what's great, too, is that you know, we have around us a team of people um, who we could really challenge 
uh, to tackle anything we present to them and, and feel with confidence that we're able to do it. And I think that's one of the exciting things that Avatar represents for the whole industry is that no longer uh, do you have to worry if you dream something, can I do it? Right. Uh, you know, that, that these open doorways where if you dream it, there's a way to make it possible. And, you know, standing here or sitting here today with you, I'm, I'm sitting on the shoulders of all those hundreds of other people who have made Avatar the Way of Water what it is, who made a lead of Battle Angel what it is. And each one of these projects is uh, iterative in the sense that we're pushing the technology uh, and how does it allow us to tell a different story the next time? I had hoped, um, I had heard he, he one time he wanted to do a new Fantastic Voyage, um, which I think, that was a 1965 movie for those of you who have never heard of it. It, it was quite extraordinary about going into the human body. Um, but I think with all the technology that you guys have developed and the industry has developed, that that would be a fascinating project. Uh, it is. It's something that we still plan on doing. We, we, a matter of fact, I... I have something I'm dealing with on that later today. So. Well, there you go. <laughs> see, I got a scoop. <laughs> I, I can't wait. But for I was that. evasive. You see, I just is something I got to do on it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, John Landau, thank you for joining us on Behind the Lens. Pete, thank you, and thank you for going to see Way of Water twice. Uh, absolutely, and paid for it. And Titanic this weekend. I'm, I absolutely intend to. I haven't seen. I didn't see it in 3D the last time it was released in 3D. But this is, um, you know. For Valentine's Day. The biggest single day in Titanic's release was when it was in its eighth week, uh, Valentine's Day. There you go. <laughs> so there we are. We're back for Valentine's Day. Love it. All right. Well, thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you.